Or there could be that sweet little girl who gets straight A's in class, but gets caught up in something that she should have not have been doing over spring break, and as her stomach gets bigger, her friends take less and less of her. Everyone is not perfect, but we live in a society where everyone wants to be that soluble child, perfect and pure in every way. There is no individuality and no acceptance in this world, and it's very, very sad. The world sets standards for the youth of today, and in most cases, if someone does not fit standards, they personally think less of themselves and they feel they don't belong. I believe that that this standard drives youth over the deep end, and, and it leads to depression, anger issues, and most times, even death. It is the harsh reality of the world, and it is up to people who don't want to live in a world like this to stand up for individuality. There are many words that can easily hurt a person. Those words shouldn't be used because a lot of teens commit suicidal with words. Gay and emo and even ugly. Those words can really hurt them to the point of insanity. Maybe there would be a lot less crazy people in the world if people didn't get hurt all the time. Sometimes it's not even okay to say it to your friends because you don't know if you can really hurt them or not. Some people just get offended by hearing some of the words. I have friends who don't like hearing these types of words and sometimes when people get mad, they use these bad words out of anger, but if you're saying it to the great someone, it's very terrible to do. I use some of these words out of anger, but I really don't mean it, because I know the effects of using these words. And we're back. You're tuned in to Radio Uprising, youth produced radio on 91.3 FM WVKR Independent Radio Poughkeepsie. We've been talking about texting today, and we just heard an awesome piece about indiv- individuality. So I have some more questions for everyone here in the studio about text messaging. During the radio roundtable we just listened to, um, or we listened to a bit earlier, sorry, one student mentioned the possibility of a connection between cell phone usage and cancer. And so I've heard a lot of buzz about this in the media, so I did a little research. Rachel, could you read the excerpt from the National Cancer Institute about the fear of cancer because of cell phone usage? Sure. (laughs) This is from the National Cancer Institute's report on cell phones and the risk of cancer. Why is there concern that cell phones may cause cancer or other health problems? There are three main reasons why people are concerned that cell phones might have the potential to cause certain types of cancer or other health problems. Cell phones emit radio frequency energy, also known as radio waves, a form of non-ionizing radiation. Tissues nearest to where the phone is held can absorb this energy. The number of cell phone users has increased rapidly. As of 2010, there were more than 303 million subscribers to the cell phone service in the United States, according to the Cellular Telecommunications and Internet Association. This is a nearly threefold increase from the 110 million users in 2000. Globally, the number of cell phone subscriptions is estimated by the International Telecommunications Union to be 5 billion. Over time, the number of cell phone calls per day, the length of each call, and the amount of time people use cell phones have increased. Cell phone technology has also undergone substantial changes. Thanks, Rachel. So there's been a lot of research done on this subject, and I don't think we need to get into the scientific details, but uh, Remy, could you read the results of a recent study for us? This is an article called Cell Phones Don't Cause Cancer, published on October 21, 2011. A new extensive study finds no evidence to link cell phone use with cancer. Over the past couple of years, reports have suggested that cell phones may cause cancer or claim the opposite. However, the interesting thing about the latest study is that its simple sample size is the entire adult population of Denmark. Research Researchers from Copenhagen's Department of Epidemiology and Public Health divided Danish adults 30 years of age and over, born after 1925, into subscribers and non-subscribers of mobile phones before 1995. The study found that occurrences of cancer among the two groups were nearly, nearly equal. Thanks, Remy. That was a tough word. Good job there. I know it's a relief to me that there is not a link between cancer and cell phone usage. Um, So I'm curious what you guys think about all of this, kind of the buzz about it. And it's great that cell phones don't cause cancer, but I think we'll all agree that there are some negative side effects of cell phones. So do you guys want to talk a little bit about those? John? 
Oh, well, about the cell phone and cancer thing. Yep. Cell phones produce radiation, but a lot of, like, tiny, tiniest amounts. But really, like, any electronics they use produce small amounts of radiation. Good point. So, like, iPods, yeah. other MP3 Or even players. even simpler things like headphones. Well, not headphones, but... Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I understand what you're saying. Anyone else? Remy? To John's point, that you get radiation from a lot of things, and yeah. it's such small amounts that it's just, you're going to get radiation in your life, so it's such <laughs> a small amount. It's not like you're at the Fukushima Daiichi power plant and you're getting all this radiation. It's just a little bit of ra- radiation, which you're going to get in your life. Yeah, so our bodies have kind of adapted to that amount of radiation, you think? And yeah, I'd agree. Rachel, thoughts? Um, less a less scientific note, more <laughs> socially. Yep. Um, some t- I feel like cell phone usage and kind of technology in general has kind of made our generation just kind of rude. Um, you go out to restaurants and you'll see a bunch of you know friends sitting at the table and they're not talking to each other. Their heads are all bent down and they're texting someone else. And I just think it's a shame because if you're gonna spend time with people, talk to them. Otherwise, yeah. when you're talking to someone and they're not listening to you and they're just, like, texting, you know, it makes you feel bad. You don't feel agree. wanted. You don't feel important. It's kind of rude. I, I would have to agree. I know, Remy, I think you brought that up in your piece from the very beginning of the show that it's really kind of frustrating when you're having a conversation with someone and then they answer a text message. And I have to say I'm so guilty of doing that before. I can't deny it. But... I have, in the past couple months, made a really conscious effort to not do that and to keep my cell phone in my bag during dinner and things like that. Um, So I know you guys don't have texting, but how does it make you feel? Do you guys think that our generation or young kids in general are kind of have poor grammar now and talk differently because of texting and technology in general? Well, I know that uh, some of my friends, like I said in my piece, do write in not that good grammar um because they they say like wanna instead of i want to and cuz like you wouldn't a text message because it's it's less letters to type but when you're writing a paper for english class (sighs) you should probably write in correct grammar or know how to write in correct grammar and not be texting so much that you're gonna mess up your english paper because it's just so natural to write in that and then you have to go over it a million times fixing everything Good point. John? Uh, I think I agree with Remy, but I think that might only be for some people. Because some people are just like, know when to switch over from text and language to correct grammar. You're right. And back and forth. Yeah. I definitely agree. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Remember, we want to hear what you have to say. Call us at 845-437-7178 to share your opinion. Now we're going to listen to a brief PSA, and then we'll hear... A song by Swanee, a CMP student, called Money Struggles. We'll be right back. Don't forget, you're listening to Radio Uprising on 91.3 FM WVKR Independent Radio. There goes your money, your health, your friends, smoking cigarettes. It's like flushing your life away. Don't you want to go out with friends? Go to the movies. Buy your dream car. It's hard to afford these things with the tobacco prices today. Playing sports. Dancing. Can you afford to be short of breath? Most friends don't like to be around smoking and it won't help you blend in. Feeling uncomfortable? Don't throw your life away. Throw out those cigarettes. It's your choice. Think about it. This message is brought to you by the Dutchess County Children's Services Council, Dutchess County Government, and Mental Health America of Dutchess County. They say it's all about the Benjamins. When it's not, it's not a lot of parents How are broken, because the child's on the block. Education on his mind, but the money got the best of him. Banging with a gang, because the people didn't test him. Why the black, they don't care what the race is. It's all about the money, for the money get a facelift. People die, yeah, day, bro, and now a different game. You expect another culture violation to the code of life. We lost MLK, M-O-K. We lost Malcolm X, X. We lost Abraham, Him. We lost Thomas Jeff, Jeff. and what's next? next? It's crazy how society is. Crazy. We're fighting economically, we're stressing what the problem is. How do you affect that citizens to react when you're poverty? We're going to adapt to how the, the community, community react. This ain't right to the people that's working hard. And ain't they fought while people losing their jobs? Oh, uh, no see law productions, man. Can't nobody feel the pain. Can't nobody feel the stress. 